good morning children welcome to today's science class in today's class here i am with another new topic children today we are going to learn block 8 where animals live yes so in previous blocks we learned about just recollect what all we learned we learned about different types of insects and also we learned about different types of plants while learning about the plants do you remember children we learned that plants are found on almost on all parts of the earth and wherever they live according to the place where they are living some sort of adjustments or adaptations are seen just you recollect about the pine trees on mountains coconut trees in the coastal areas cactus and all we learn yes to children same way in today's class we are going to discuss about the animals how animals are able to live in the different types of land forms or when they are living in the water or whether they are able to live on both land and water that's what we are going to learn is it not interesting children yes so as usual we'll start with an activity just tell right you can do on the on a rough paper or a rough book as usual and just you can note down what is the activity and later also you can complete it see forest pond and trees three different places on the earth on the earth there are different types of places are there yes no children the land form is different even the water bodies are also different from one to another these all we have learned in our previous classes so now in the forest just you can pause and you can write you can write three three or two two animals which will which we can find in a forest two animals which we can find in a pond two animals which we can find on the trees yes children can you be able to write yes so now later also you can complete that so i hope that you might have written deer yes here deer we find in the forest and anything else rabbits we can find in the forest lion tiger so many you can add and what are the different animals we can find in a pond children different types of fishes yes so fishes generally fishes are found in pond any other different types of small insects also are found in the ponds yes and near the uh, even in the pond some birds like duck also will be there yes no children now on the trees generally birds right birds are seen in the they will have their build they will build their nest and also ants you can see yes some snakes sometimes snakes are found on the trees yes like that so you can add up the three or four you can write for each category so what does that indicate so in all almost all the places on the earth we can find the animals and where they live accordingly they will be able to survive there survival means what they will be able to get their food yes so that only they can live so now when you talk about this so forest where it is it is on the land trees also we can find on the land generally and pond pond means it's a water body so now only we can categorize here animals living on land living in water and also animals which are able to fly they are the birds so they that most of the time they are in the air so that is what we are going to learn so this you can complete by writing some few names you can add up which we are which you can find in the forest pond and the trees so next is so animals on land animals in water and also animals which are in air which are most of the time found in the air so three categories of animals just we will uh, learn about them so animals on land so and when they are living on the land they should be able to get their food then only they will be they should be able to get their food so that only they can live yes so to get their food so generally generally the animals living on land how do they move children so you know that they move to get the food in search of food and water and also to escape from the enemies these three only very important for the animals to survive on the earth wherever they are so animals on land they need to move no to escape or to get the food to search of water how do they move what do they have they will have very good they have the legs most of them not all but most of them use their legs to run walk to get the food and also to escape from the enemies and also to attack and get their food yes so if, if you take animals in water even they have to move 
if you talk about fishes or any other animals in the sea oceans and all like uh, octopus or any other animals uh, living in the water they have to move to get their food and also to search the escape from the uh, search for the food and escape from the enemies so they have the if you talk about fish fishes generally they have the fins most of them we are tell we are taking uh, commonly what we see commonly where animals on the land they will have the legs there are some ex exceptions yes if you talk about uh, if you take snakes they live on land but they don't have legs yes so most of the animals living on land generally they move by legs same way if you talk about the fishes in water they have fins to move why they have to move to get the food and animals in air so that is they are not the most of the time they are found in the air you all know that if you talk about the birds they use their wings to move yes so this legs fins and wings help these animals to this physical feature yes we can see that help them to survive on the place where they are living generally animals on land even the plants on land we learn the terrestrial plants same way here animals on land are called as terrestrial animals and most of them move using their legs to get their food animals living in water are called as aquatic already you are familiar with the word aquatic right aquatic animals they if we are taking the fishes as consideration they will have the fins to move so that they can get their food and animals on air are called as aerial animals aerial aerial animals so they will be because terrestrial and aquatic already you know so birds when we when we talk about the birds they use their yeah children aerial animals that is when we talk about the birds they use their wings to move why they have to move to get in search of food water and also to escape from the enemies and also to get their food yes children so now so these are the physical features which will help the animals these animals to adapt and to adjust that is adjust to live in their surrounding yes now in particular we will see how the animals on land differs from one animal to another animal as per the uh, place they live so that they can be able to survive on it yes children shall we move on so now animals on land in detail we will discuss some three categories so animals on land this is not new to you because already we have discussed same way about plants living on land you all know that landforms are not the same yes landforms some places landform is in the form of a high mountain sometime it is a desert area sometime it is a grassland this all we discussed yes previously so today we are going to consider three different places yes children so three different landforms and how the animals are able to live there that's what we are going to discuss so first one is deserts desert area second we will move on to the grasslands and then the high mountains yes children so now for these deserts so you all know that by now deserts are very hot places and there is very less rainfall and it is covered with sandy soil as soon as we hear the word desert you all know that very hot climate and sandy soil so the animal which is found in the desert should be able to manage that hot weather and also the uh, also the water is very very scarce no water is not available and also it should be able to able to get the food in that just in that such a dry weather condition and sandy soil it should be able to manage to live so generally in deserts what which is the which animal is commonly found very good camel a desert we can find it is also called as the ship of the desert because mostly in deserts camels are used to move and camels are found in in the deserts and when we talk about the grasslands children lion yes we can find lion and many other animals also just we will consider one one animal in one place so that it will be easy for you to understand how that each animal are differing from the other one found in the other land form now in the mountains you all know that mountain goats and generally yak yes are used for transportation also so like this if you a, a camel if we if you take a camel and if it is if it is in the mountain if it is made to live it is very difficult for it to 
live comfortably there. Same way, York cannot be able to survive in the desert. Same thing for the lion also. It will not be able to survive in the desert. So, as per the place where they are found, they have some physical features which are adapted to live there comfortably. So, one by one, we will see that in detail. Yes, children. First, we will take in consideration desert. Yes. Deserts have dry weather and sandy soil so now just now we said camels are found there so how the camels will be able to live there ha camels have long legs and broad feet how this is going to help them if you take the picture in the, in the virtual picture also you can see well, how this long legs so as the legs are long then it will be away from the the body is away from the sandy soil sandy soil will be very hot yes because it is a dry soil so the uh, temperature will be very high there so as his long legs helps it to be away from the land so that it will be able to little bit it will be able to manage to move in the on the desert and this broad feet as it is see when you are when you go to a coastal place in the sandy soil when you, if you are made to walk how difficult it is to walk our as the soil is loose our legs will sink yes our feet will sink so we have to pull our legs and we have to move with the difficulty same difficulty the camels also may have but to overcome the difficulty they have broad feet which will help them not to sink in the soil so long legs keep them away from land hot land surface and broad feet help them to walk without sinking sinking is without the leg may being pulled inside so they will be unable to walk so these two features there are so many even they have thick skin to bear that hot weather they have uh, thick skin so that that will be helping them to bear the hot weather condition and also it will be cold during the winter it will be cold the extreme climates are there so both they can be able to overcome by this many some many physical features many physical features help them but very important one important thing one, ones are the long legs broad feet and the thick skin helps the camel to live comfortably in the uh, deserts next we will move on to the mountains so in the mountains so when we talk about mountains sometimes the mountains are most of the times are very cold even sometimes they are snow covered and in that extreme climate the animals living there should be able to bear the cold weather that's how they that then only they can be able to survive yes if you take the york or the mountain goat even they have the furry skin so the thick skin will help them to bear the cold and also they have fur that uh, uh, like uh, uh, hair only but it will be a thick coating of fur so this fur like uh, how we wear sweater during cold days so they have naturally they have the fur on their body this too will help them to bear the extreme cold uh, climate prevailing there so this is even the if you talk about uh, this polar bear and all you see they will also have fur thick skin fur and also that color see white color will make them to mix with the snow so that easily they can go and get the food they have to get the food no so to getting the food is a very important thing for survival so when we talk about the snow covered mountains polar pol poles i am talking about polar bear and all they will have white color fur so this fur how it is helping they will mix with the snow so that the any uh, the an enemy will not be able to identify them so there they can also easily they can move and go and get their food here in the when you talk about the york and the mountain goats we can see thick skin will help them the fur in their body help them to bear the extreme cold conditions next we will talk go on to the grasslands so grasslands how the grasslands will be grasslands we can find tall thick grasses yes tall grasses are generally found in the grassland so grasslands different types of animals live one which we are going to consider today is the lion so when we talk about the lion the lion also they have the skin color the skin color helps them to mix with the surrounding they mix with the mixing mix that is called 
uh, merging with the surrounding camouflage we'll see camouflage means just they mix with the surrounding so that the enemies are which they want to get as the food will not be able to identify them so this skin color will help the lion to go close to the deer till the deer cannot be able to identify the lion so that it can get its food and when we talk about even grass lions when we talk we, we say deer they you know that they have long legs to run fast yes each animal has have their own way uh, of uh, physical own their own adaptation in their physical features to survive so when we talk about lion the skin color color of the skin it will merge with the surrounding so that if they cannot be spotted easily this help them to hunt the food and be able to survive on the land so in today's class two things we have very simple one and also interesting one we have learned yes no children first we discussed about the how the animals are able to move when they are living on the land most of the animals which live on the land they move by legs and how the animals living in the water are able to move they use their fins to move to get their food and also we learned about the how the animals when they are flying for the most of the time how they are able to move they use their wings then we learned in detail about the animals on the land three different land forms we took grasslands and deserts and also the mountains so we discussed about one or two few animals living there and how the physical features are helping them to survive there i hope this is enough for you to complete the s1 and s2 just i will i will discuss the questions after this is over uh, using that resource sheet complete the s1 and s2 uh, uh, complete that activity which are the animals which are living in the forest that activity you can complete and also you can uh, then activity 2 you can the same a4 sheet only back side you can write animals living found in the grasslands found in the deserts and found in the mountains these three and you see this get the take the help of resource sheet and you can write the names and also how what are the features physical features help them to survive there so just we will see what is given in your workbook children now so when we take the s1 it's just a one tabla column you have yes no children places you all can take and just you can see what is given places animals live see there complete the table name of the animal and just you are write whether they are found in land water or air yes children deer already done for you tiger you i i know that you will do eagle maina goat shark mahishi also what is it it is a animal which is living in water only you can find out and you can write where it will live you can think if you have any doubt you can think and do how do land animals move in search of food how they will move children they will use their legs to move most of them very good how do fish move in in search of food they will use their fins to move uh, is it correct to say that uh, all land animals have legs children no just now we discussed no fish snakes also live on the land but they are not having the legs so most of them have the legs some of them uh, how the snakes will move they use their muscles to move yes you can give us an example and you can give your any other animal also you can uh, you can give us an example and complete that question on your own next s yes, two children see tabla column they gave clearly the uh, how will the desert will be high mountains will be how the grasslands by reading the textbook you can complete the which physical feature this physical feature is helping it to survive there second question what are the physical features that help a camel a long leg broad feet thick skin you can write yeah tiger one minute yeah tiger lives in grassland and forest with very trees what physical feature does a tiger have that helps it to live in grasslands and for we just discussed about lion tiger also see tigers skin color and also stripes on their body will help them to merge merging merge means mixing with the surrounding merge with the surround merge with surrounding so that they will be able to hunt and get their merge with the surrounding which will help the skin color and the stripes on its body this you can do on your own snow leopard live in the cold mountains and tigers in live in places that that are not very cold what physical feature helps snow leopards to live in high up in the 
mountains snow leopards how it will what color they will have snow leopards have you seen snow leopards pictures children you can see the virtual picture and you can just you can think which physical feature is helping it to live in that cold that i am leaving for you to seeing the picture you should be able to answer which physical feature will be helping the snow leopard to see the skin color and uh, carefully and i hope you will be able to complete so after this read the textbook complete the two activities what i said in an a4 one sheet is enough and complete s more important is completing the s1 and s2 and be ready for the next class children thank you children